It's now time for Biblical Dream Interpretation 101. This is a show where you learn directly from the Word of God concerning dreams and visions, how to interpret them, and why dreams and visions are so important in the lives of believers. And now your host, Whitfield Harrington. Well, God bless you. God bless you. Thank you for tuning in to this week's show. And I hope that this show is going to be a blessing to you. I definitely want to continue where I left off last week, which I'm dealing with a series entitled The Necessity of Spiritual Warfare. Uh, Let me repeat that, The Necessity of Spiritual Warfare. And just a quick recap um, from last week, I dealt with the idea that some Christians uh, believe that we as Christians aren't supposed to really have any struggles or any problems. Everything is supposed to be smooth sailing. But the Word of God tells us differently. And it it is, in my opinion, absolutely a necessity that you engage in spiritual warfare. And this week, I want to take it a step further. And I want to deal with what I titled the anointed and the self-appointed. Let me say that again, the anointed and the self-appointed. Because when you talk about spiritual warfare, there are people who are anointed by God to walk in the authority or in an office or in a title. And when you are anointed by God, the anointing gives you a package of power, a package of rights in the spirit realm to be able to move in the realm of authority that God has authorized you to move in. And to give you an example of that, I recall just the other day where I was in traffic and there were two police officers who had traffic blocked and they were in the middle of the road on the wrong side of the road, turned in the wrong directions, having a conversation with each other. And everybody had to wait until they finished their conversation. And then they turned around and went in the opposite direction on the wrong side of the road. And the Lord dropped something in my spirit. The Lord dropped in my spirit that the police officers have the power to do that. And they also have the authority to do that. And I watched as one of the police officers ran the red light. Now, I want you to understand that many times we have the power to do things that we see other people do who are anointed to do it. And listen to this statement real close. I have the power to run a red light. The only thing I need to run that red light is to take my foot off the brake and put my foot on the accelerator and go through the light. However, I am not authorized to run a red light. The police officer is authorized, but I am not. That's the difference between a person who is anointed to do something and someone who is self-appointed to do something. When you look in the Bible, um, in the book of Acts, the 19th chapter, you see that there were certain vagabond Jews who were exorcists that took upon themselves to call an evil spirit out of the man. And the, and the evil spirit in the man spoke and says, Paul, I know, Jesus, I know, but who are you? You see, Paul and Jesus had been authorized by God to do spiritual warfare at the level that the demonic spirit recognized that hell had registered their names as being anointed to battle with them. And you have to recognize that when you are anointed, your anointing is going to be verified by what I call Goliath. You see, when David was anointed king, The Bible declares that when Samuel anointed him as king, that immediately he was called to the king's palace. And that's when Goliath presented himself in the next chapter. So when you are anointed for a position, you can expect a battle to validate your anointing. The Bible says that when Jesus was baptized by John the Baptist, and immediately he came out of the water. A voice said that this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. Then the spirit took him up into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil. The devil came to test the validity of his anointing, the validity of his calling. And the problem 
with those who cannot distinguish the difference between being anointed and self-appointed is the devil makes no distinction when it comes to battling you. If you call yourself a prophet and you have not been ordained by God as a prophet, then hell is going to release an attack that is designed for a prophet. And if you don't have the package, the power, and the authority that comes with the office of the prophet, God have mercy on you because you go need it. You see, I can recall years ago, um, a friend of mine, prophet Tom Spencer, was um, actually somewhere preaching, and there was a lady that he knew, and she went from being an evangelist to a pastor to a prophetess, and then finally she ascended to an apostle. Well, in the process of her ascending to the apostle, they asked him to come and pray the consecration prayer. And he said he tried his best to pray something, and the Spirit spoke to her and told him, you might as well just sit down because I'm no way in this. And then finally, later on, she called him and told him that after that service, I think a few weeks after that service, she was awakened from her sleep by something tapping on her. And she woke up and saw a black silhouette standing over her. And this thing pointed at her and pointed back at itself and put two fists up in the symbol that we are going to fight. You see, she stepped into the realm of the apostle, but she didn't have the mantle of the apostle. And that spirit said, okay, you call yourself an apostle, we gonna fight. A few months later, she went blind. A few years later, she passed away. And this is what I'm telling you. Don't think that a title entitles you to the authority that comes with the title. You have to be authorized by God to walk in the authority of that title. People will hear you prophesy once and now they want to proclaim you a prophet. Well, that, that, that can have some serious repercussions because if God hasn't authorized you as it, then it's going to create unnecessary warfare in your life. And we see a lot of this going on in the church where ministries are, 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 are just extinguished by the enemy because people are moving too fast for what appears to be important because you can have the title and not have the anointing and can still be holding a position as, as uh, King Saul. When God anointed David, the Bible says that the Lord removed his spirit from Saul. He still had the position, but he no longer had the anointing. The anointing was moved to David. And so it's so important that you recognize the difference between having the power to do something or a gift in that area. Just because you can do what a prophet does doesn't make you a prophet. I can put on a suit, an army suit, and get out there and march up and down the street. That's not going to make me a member of the army. You know? And even if you're saved and even you're in church, there are certain things that God has given order to that belongs to the individuals who fall under that level of authority. For instance, there are a lot of people that work in the White House, but everybody does not have the authority to view classified information. You see, there are some things that God gives to apostles, some things God gives to prophets, some things he gives to pastors, teachers, evangelists, so like. And so when you stay in the realm that you're supposed to be in, there is an angelic assignment that's designed for that. And when you step outside of that realm, there is a demonic assignment designed to attack that title. And if you are following somebody, who is operating outside of the calling that God has given them. Woe to everybody. Because the Bible says if the blind lead the blind, they both will fall into the ditch. And it's sad that blind folks won't recognize how blind they are until they end up in a ditch. So that's why you have to have a spiritual responsibility upon yourself to ensure that you know the word of God for yourself because warfare in and of itself is so important 
that you need to make certain that you shooting the right gun. <laughs> you don't have authorization to get in a plane and you're in the army. You know, uh, you don't have authorization to, 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 to steer up a ship through the ship, through the sea, and, and you're in the Air Force. Things have to be done in order, in order for you to truly grow in God. And, you know, I'm dealing with this because we're in an age now where spiritual warfare, it is it is intense. It is beyond anything I ever imagined it would be at this point. And it takes insight into the spirit to understand your calling. Don't worry about nobody else. It's your soul that you need to be concerned about. It's your soul that you need to be focused on. And that's why you first have to understand that you need the anointing and not just a self-appointed position. Notice I said self-appointed. There's a difference between you being appointed under someone else who is anointed. Now don't, don't get that mixed up. If you're under leadership and you're appointed to a position, then you're, on, you're in order as long as God has ordained it. So you grow through the ranks properly and not allow yourself to be pushed into a battle that you are not prepared to fight. That is not going to be fun. That is not going to be interesting. You're going to find yourself going from prayer line to prayer line. Want these folks to lay hands on you and these folks to lay hands on you. And before you know it, you start collecting all these strange spirits and you're taking them back to your church, back to your house, back to your children. And it becomes, you know, it just becomes to where you were almost, you know, I hate to say it, Christians will, will get into witchcraft. This is how it works. When you get into things to where you haven't been ordained by God and the next thing you know, your mind becomes warped and the enemy begins to bring things to you and he twists your view of Christianity. And that's how the enemy hijack prophetic gifts, witches and warlocks. That I mean, people that see those things, psychics, those are just gifts that have been hijacked by the enemy. All good things come from the Lord. So the enemy has to hijack those things in order for them to work. And so I'm stressing this now because where we're going with this teaching, it's time to go to a higher height and a deeper depth. And you first have to understand that you must know who you are in God. When God appoints you to a position, you recognize that you have the authority to be in that position. And when you recognize that you have the authority to be in that position, there is a package of power that comes with that position. And it's so important that you understand that you be anointed by God. Well, I'm going to stop right there. I'm going to stop right there and I want to pray because I know this, this is some toe stepping on. Um, this is some tight, but it's right teaching, but it's needed. It's needed when you look up and you see pastors 37 years old dropping dead in the pulpit. It's, it's needed when you see all of the things that are happening in the country and we can't get to the root. I am tired of giving psychological explanations to the spiritual problems that are going on in our world. Let's get to the root of the problem, not the fruit. Let's deal with the root of the problem. And when you begin to look at the spiritual side of it, you will truly understand what's going on. Well, I'm going to pray now. Father God, we thank you for this word. We thank you for the ability to share the word with your people. I pray now that the word would be received in their heart and that it would not be taken away by the enemy, O oh God. I thank you and I praise you and give you all the glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, that's my time for this week. Thank you again for tuning in and have a wonderful day.